All right, guys, in this video, I'm gonna be uh, teaching you how to install a single gang box. So again, make sure to watch the other videos in this series of how to rough in as an electrician. So again, I always like to mount to the top of the box. That way, when you hold the box, your hand is not blocking the center or the bottom, like you're able to easily see the mark and you can put your screws in. Okay, we'll break that all down in this video. Before we get into it, again, check out my free book I have for apprentice electricians by going to becominganelectrician.com forward slash subscribe. Tons of valuable tips in there of what I wish I knew before uh, I became a journeyman electrician here in Canada. Okay, so there's two things that you'll need uh, to rough in and typically your company will supply these. Cheaper companies will try to get away with nails. And if you have ever tried to install a single gang box with nails, that company is being really silly. And the reason is because when you hit the nail in, eventually the box does come loose, not always, but typically. And it's just, it's never as good of a hold as screws, okay? And then when we have to install scabs, as you can see in the last video, I talked about scabs. So whenever you see an X, that is one scab. If there was two X's, that is two scabs. And that is where you would use like the eight by threes, okay? All right, so let's get into installing our single gang box. So again, the first place to look is in the very, very back of your electrical prints. The engineer is going to tell you the job site specs and they might say we want you to mount this box 48 center i would put my box center mark top of box and that is the measurement i would be using for all of my boxes okay to actually screw this box in it's super easy okay so usually what happens is you have one person doing what's called layout they're making the marks in a sense of what device goes there for example is it just one switch well then that's just a single gang if it was a plug that is just, again, a single gang. If there's two switches, we are, again, we are using you know, a double gang. If there's three switches, we would use a triple gang. And once the person has gone through, someone behind them is coming and they're actually just dropping these boxes on the ground. That way someone can come, pick it up with their drill, and then they can easily install it. It's just a workflow thing, especially when you have two or three, maybe four different people on the job site. When you can get one person doing the same task over and over and over, which, so in other words, if you just give them one tool that they can keep doing over and over, it's typically way faster than having to keep switching up your tools. So someone has done, already done the mark out and the, and the box heights, okay? Someone has laid out all the boxes, then someone behind comes and they are just mounting all these boxes. Now, one thing I wanna talk about is tool pouches. I don't like tool pouches and whenever a project manager would try to push tool pouches on you, it's kind of funny because it's like, hey man, you're sitting in the office, not, ver not working that hard and everyone out here is having to work. So again, you always want to protect your body. And when it comes to boxing, all you need, this right here. So I just have a pocket of screws right now, okay? And that's typically what I would do on the job site. You just have a pocket of screws in your, if I'm, I'm right-handed, so I would put them in my left pocket, okay? And that allows me to take this and this and easily just screw the box in. So that's how fast it is. So again, let's just do a quick recap before we actually install the box because installing an electrical box is actually a really, really simple process. But the thing is, it's all about getting a good install right now. So for example, if you're gonna install the box, like you don't want the box to be like uh, slanted. Like, so in other words, you have, you have your ears right here, okay? And what you wanna do is you wanna make sure those ears are flush, like you don't want it sticking out because what happens is the, you know, when they drywall it, your box sticks out and it's just, it's such a nightmare to fix. So a good box install is gonna make your life so easy as an electrician. Now, sometimes if, depending on your prints, you have to be looking at how many layers of drywall and plywood are going on this wall. In a typical home, typically it's just, you just install the box and you're good to go. But when you are in a commercial setting where there is such, a, such as a condo, there's what's called party walls. So if someone's living in one room, one unit, and then someone's in the other unit, and they have what's called a shared wall, which is a party wall, um, they are having to have, you know, like two layers of drywall for fire rating. And so you have to make sure that you're sticking your box out a little further. And so sometimes you have to break off your tabs to do that, okay? So again, this line right here, let's just say the engineer was saying center of box. I would put my box center, I would make a mark at the top and then I would tell all the apprentices, this is the marking that 
all our switches are going to be. Because again, when you go to install your box, your hand blocks all the measurements below of where you're handing, uh, where you're actually handling the box. So top of box is by far the easiest. And then again, if you have two plugs right beside each other, so two separate boxes, you would be, you would want to be measuring to the screw hole. Okay, that's going to make sure that your boxes are very, very in line. Some people use a laser, but sometimes you can't afford a laser, right? And so the old tried and true technique is to measure to the screw hole of the boxes if they're right beside each other. Because what happens is, is if this was a, a kitchen, they have the backsplash with the grout lines and you want to make sure that everything's lined up nice and, and even. So yeah, measure to screw holes on really important plugs. But on normal plugs, these are called like our normal switches. It takes too long and it's all about working fast. The problem with center is you can never really get it center. It's so hard to kind of see what is center. Again, bottom of box, you'll never see bottom of box when you go to actually mount it. It's so annoying. So top of box is by far the easiest. And when it comes to the actual screw holes, usually I have found that you want to be putting one um, kind of like the closest. It usually makes it like the, the tightest install. I'd be putting it on this one right here. And then again, uh, this one right here. So again, I'm just gonna go top of box. I hold my hand just like this. So my thumb is keeping it nice and tight. And I'm also pushing back, making sure that it's not sticking out. And then I will just install it uh, with the screw right there. Okay. Also, one thing to say is I really like an impact when installing boxes. They're super lightweight. They are a little louder. So wearing earplugs is what I do suggest in the roughing in stage. Because again, you are installing scabs, you're installing screws, long screws, especially an impact. It's just very loud for a long period of time. But so here we go. So I got one more to do here. And so again, we're gonna test the box and see, is it a good install, right? Like, so really you only need two screws in just a single box like this, okay? Like this is a very, very good install. Um, and so again, when you look at this box, you wanna be looking for, is it flush? Um, and is it is it installed tight? And that's it, and then it's done. Then you move on, okay? Now, once from this point on, then people would start coming through, they would drill all their holes, you pull wire, you staple it, and then you do what's called cutting in. So again, this is just how I've always seen it over my years where I have worked as an electrician. I worked with a couple different companies, and again, this was all just very standard stuff for the icon. Um, this line typically meant top of box, and they wanted the switch on the left side of the stud. If you see the X, that typically means one scab. If you see two X's, that would mean two scabs. Okay, I just wanna quickly stop here and really present this clear for you. So we have our S with a line through it is a single switch. If there was another S here, it would be a two gang. If it was another S, it would be a three gang. If you had an, an S with a three, that means a three way. So don't get confused if this is a three gang versus a three way. A three way switch means that we have two switches controlling the same light, for example. Now this right here, this is usually top of box, let's say, and then typically I have seen they'll do they'll do that, essentially just saying that they want on the left side of the stud. This little line up here was only for the sake of this tutorial because what I was trying to say is in the very, very beginning of the job, when you look in the back of the prints, you are going to be looking at what the engineer is telling you for the heights, for your switches, for your plugs. And what you want to do is you're just going to make a line, okay? For, you know, so for example, the engineer, let's say, says 48 to center, let's just say. So you'd put your box here, let's just say about center. And then what you're going to do is you're going to measure top of box, okay? Now, every single box from that point, you are then, like, so this is top of box, you would be doing line. And then if you want it on the left side of the stud, or if you want it on the right side of the stud, it would be like that okay so essentially what you're trying to say is we want top of box right side or top of box left side but this one would no longer be the measurement this is the top of box and then left side or like i said right side now again this is a scab so if you have one x that is one scab if you had two x's that is two scabs and that's it you can't have any more than two scabs okay i just wanted to clarify the top of box left side as well as some different icons again you might have like a, a plug um, sometimes you have something for like telephone or you might have data where you know it's kind of colored in a little bit 
And okay, so let's get back into the video. The actual word scab is kind of weird, but essentially all it's doing is you're just putting another piece of wood here. And so that pushes it out just a little bit from the door frame. Uh, but again, so there's no more than two scabs, okay? So here is just the box of how it would look. So there's top of box. You can see the ear tabs. Sometimes what happens is if you um, screw, if you put your screws in kind of too tight, like kind of too much on an, um, too much on an angle like this way, what will happen is your ear tabs will kind of almost stick out and you don't want that either. You just want to put your box nice and tight. Okay. And then you just put your, you just put your one screw in. Once your one screw is in, then, you know, you just put your hand in your pocket, you get your other screw, and then you can just put your other screw in and that's it. So that is a single gang box and you can see if I move it, um, there's like no movement at all really, which means it's a very, very good install, right? Once it comes to um, these double gangs, uh, I th we typically usually used to, used to put four screws in. We used to just, again, same thing, we'd put one in here somewhere, anywhere in here, and then you just put it one here and one here. And again, you wanna make sure like it is level and stuff like that because uh, it's all about a good rough in. If you have a good install on your box, the drywall goes on smooth. Then when you go to actually install the plug, it's level, everything is good, right? You just got a nice good install. The box isn't sticking out. If the box is sticking out weird, so again, you can see that, you know, all the tabs are good. If the tab was sticking out, like it, you know, if it's kind of like lean, leaning a little bit like this, it is a nightmare to fix in the finishing stage. And again, depending on how many layers of drywall or plywood have to go in, because sometimes they might put one layer of uh, plywood, then one layer of drywall, depending on the engineer and the building. Sometimes you have to stick the box out. So you might have to break the tabs and then you will be able to stick the box out a little further. And typically these boxes even have lines sharing uh, five eighths or an inch and a quarter or, or like whatever you need, okay? All right, so that is a single gang box. Again, if you guys wanna stay updated with the website and learn how to become an apprentice electrician, you guys can download my free book by going to becominganelectrician.com forward slash subscribe. Tons of valuable tips in there of what I wish I knew before I became a journeyman electrician. I have a playlist here on YouTube that will just cover a bunch of just basic things such as a single gang box, double gang box. We'll get into a plug. So when we are measuring for our box here, we wanna make sure it's what's called um, above finished floor. That is AFF, okay? And so right now I am on the, the finished floor technically. So again, even if you're gonna put like a little bit of hardwood, it could be a little bit higher, like a half inch. So that's a, technically your above finished floor. But in a condo, sometimes this concrete is not your finished floor, right? Like you, you, you would be on plywood, which means that you would have two double, uh, two double uh, bottom plates. And then they, then they pour the liquid concrete and you're left with only one, which means that your boxes would all be an inch and a half too low. I'm telling you, it happens so easy. So I'll talk to you in the next video.